Born in 1941 in the colonial capital city of Kenya, Nairobi, Richard was raised by a distinguished family. His dad was an agricultural civil servant and descendant of a wealthy Oxfordshire family. Richard was a curious child, and fortunately his parents, who were quite interested in the natural sciences, happily answered their son's questions in strict scientific terms. This early education in the sciences likely led to Dawkins' departure from Christianity in his teenage years. As he recalls, the main residual reason why I was religious was from being so impressed with the complexity of life and feeling that it had to have a designer, and I think it was when I realized that Darwinism was a far superior explanation that pulled the rug out from under the argument of design, and that left me with nothing. Dawkins would further entrench his skepticism, diving into Bertrand Russell's Why I Am Not Christian, a book that argues against the historical existence of Christ as well as his supposed importance. Dawkins then attended Oxford, where he would study zoology. While there, he was tutored by the Nobel Prize winning biologist Nicholas Tinbergen, who is best known as one of the founders of ethology, the study of animal behavior. Dawkins soon became his research student, studying the role and nature of decision-making in different organisms. Dawkins received his MA and Doctor of Philosophy degree, and shortly afterwards would attain a teaching position at Berkeley for three years. Afterwards, Dawkins became a lecturer at Oxford, and famously published The Selfish Gene in 1976, a book that would become extremely popular and cement Dawkins as a public intellectual. The selfish gene argues that all life evolves through the difference and survival of replicating entities, such as genes. Here Dawkins would also introduce his idea of the meme, or cultural gene, an expansion of previous ideas by other thinkers that attempt to analogize culture in terms of Darwinian evolution. Dawkins mainly argues that the gene is the primary unit of natural selection. In the selfish gene, he suggests that a gene-centered view of evolution makes perfect sense. As he argues, the more two organisms are genetically similar, the more it would make sense for them to help each other. This in turn would increase the chances of the similar genes being passed on. In this sense, genes are selfish as they improve the survival chances of those that are similar to them. Genes that are naturally selected are ones who benefited from their genetic descendants acting selfishly in terms of striving to be replicated. Some take serious issue with Dawkins' use of the word selfish. Although Dawkins specified that he does not mean that the genes have any sort of volition or motive, but it is simply putting the process into understandable terms. As an extension of his 1986 book, The Blind Watchman, Dawkins would publish The God Delusion in 2006. He would argue that God likely does not exist and that the belief in God is a delusion. Quoting Robert Persig, When one person suffers from a delusion, it is called insanity. When many people suffer from a delusion, it is called religion. Dawkins would apply his theory of memes to the emergence of world religions, viewing religious belief as a mimetic virus. Those infected have a series of symptoms, such as a deep and uncompromising view of what is right and wrong, that mystery is a good thing, and an intolerant view of rival faiths. Religions tend to not spread because they are found to be true, but rather through cultural transmission, such as through a charismatic leader or parents. The Christian theologian Ulster McGrath notes that many psychological studies show that the majority of religious people tend to actually report greater well-being, and ask Dawkins how it could be considered a virus under such evidence. In 2008, Dawkins would retire from his professorial duties and plan to write children's books that would warn kids against believing in anti-science fairy tales. He would re-emerge in the spotlight in 2015, tweeting this. Dawkins would lose his Humanist of the Year title shortly afterwards. Richard Dawkins was at one point a revolutionary figure in his field, establishing new ways of looking at genetics, evolutionary theory, and how culture works. Regarding his advocacy for atheism, he also emerged at a time in which religious fundamentalism did appear as a threat to human progress and basic security. Dawkins did pave the way for a dialogue against rigidity to begin with, speaking out against the treatment of gays by religious institutions. However, Dawkins has since been cast away as a problematic and archaic figurehead of a movement that has frankly lost its edge. The relevance of Dawkins' commentary on political issues, especially those concerned with gender, is understandably shallow. Nonetheless, acknowledge that he too at one point paved the way for progress, and that we too, despite the desire to always be on the right side of history, 
will also one day fail to understand the complex world around us.